Hello, my name is Matthew, and I'm a 3D scanning application engineer uh, here at Hawkridge Systems. My name is Patrick Olson. I'm a product sales manager here at Hawkridge Systems. Today, we're going to talk about a part that we designed. Uh, Matthew and I worked together from start to finish, scanning the part uh, all the way through the printing of the part. And what this part is, is it actually is for my camper, and it has multiple uses that we have on there. So. The design was uh, originally looking for a ladder mount for the side of my truck. And it's kind of evolved in from just the ladder, but also using it for other pieces as well. So we can like hang different things off of it when I'm going out camping or if I'm going out skiing, snowboarding, uh, I can lean the skis, lock them in there and just multiple uses. So uh, this part right here is actually uh, gonna be in, uh, in a couple different iterations by the time we're all the way done with it, but it's a fully functioning part that we have right now. Mm -hmm. And how we went about making the part, um, we kind of started just like any other design cycle where we started with a product idea, um, trying to get data around what we want to model around. So what we first did is we 3D scanned Patrick's truck um, actually in a parking lot. Um, so we we're able to do that without any need of a traditional environment. So we 3D scanned the side of the truck. Um, and then once we had that 3D scan, we we're able to turn it into a mesh file. If you ever work with mesh files, um, they're basically graphical data representing what the shape of the object is which we can bring inside of programs like SOLIDWORKS. And once it's inside of SOLIDWORKS, we can reverse engineer it to make an actual CAD body from that mesh data. So we have uh, interactable surfaces and ways to double check our tolerances and, and other kind of um, simulations. Once we had that reference body, um, I went about making the clip itself. So we started with a couple of different iterations and we ended up deciding one final iteration that would hook onto the back. Once we had that base clip made, we just went about adding features depending on what Patrick needed. So different hooks and hole locations. And once we had a final design, we just exported it as a step body or an STL and Patrick sent it over to his printer. Yeah, exactly. So the printer that I used was a Mark Forge X7 Field Edition, um, which is basically the same thing as the standard industrial X7, um, just a, a, you know specifically designed for the military. And you plug it in, you can uh, just uh, plug in the USB and uh, import the file and just hit print and it starts to go. So with that printer on the X7 that we used, there's multiple uh, materials that you can use, but because of this part and you know potential changes that we wanted to do, we just did it in the base material, which is just the onyx. And with that onyx material, it still gives it the strength um, that you have, uh, you know, from all the supports and everything that we designed into it. Now, you know, later on, if I want uh, extra support, we can lay carbon fiber in there. We can do fiberglass, Kevlar, anything else like that uh, that we want to do. So this particular part, you can see it's pretty hefty. It's got, uh, you know, it's a pretty wide surface that goes on. And, but this particular part took about 30 hours and that was without turbo print, you know, just the basic print because I wanted to see how the quality came out and everything um, just with that base material. And again, I was just trying to prove out the concept um, and, you know, possibly change it. I might not change anything to it because it works, you know, pretty good the way that it is right now. So, uh, so like I said, this took about 30 hours to do um maybe about ten dollars of material that we have here so it's not very expensive and that's one of the key things on this is you can go through as an engineer or you know as a company as you're you know building designs you can just change it around real quick yeah so so 30 hour print you know only ten dollars of material um and no standard you know no weird kind of form of modeling around this you know just getting that scan data reverse engineering and then making parts from that and then sending it to a print there's really nothing abnormal about a typical design cycle um and like I said, the, the fact that we're able to do it outside of traditional environments with scanning um, the car outside, doing the modeling while we're traveling and then printing it inside your home just kind of emphasizes how this technology is very robust and mobile nowadays. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you can do it anywhere. Um, you know, we're both remote and we were able to pull it off here on, in a very short time. So, yeah, it yeah. turned out really well. It was a really cool project. Yeah. Well, if you're ever interested in finding more out about this project or more information about 3D scanners or printers, um, you're more than welcome to reach out to us at Hawkridge Systems. Um, again, my name is Matthew. My name is Patrick. And, one, and thank you for joining.